Well, hello again. Uh, this time I'd like to talk to you about deconvolution, digital deconvolution. And this is a process whereby we try to correct a 3D volume for spherical aberrations that exist within the data. Now, a spherical aberration in confocal microscopy is generally the elongation of objects down the z-axis. So I've got here an image of some fluorescent beads. So obviously we have an X and Y image. And down the depth, if we step down through the, the data in the Z series, you'll see the beads coming in and out of focus. But if we were to measure these beads, you can see there's a bit of flare here. If I wanted to measure the diameter of that bead, I'd maybe make it this sort of size if you see up in this up here when I draw this line it's coming out at how we say 3.9 let's call it 4 microns this is a rather large bead we would use much smaller beads for um, this kind of work for uh, to, to determine the point spread function but this will serve a, a purpose so if I was to look at this bead from the side along the, the depth axis, the z-axis, it should also look like a sphere. However, when we look at the orthogonal views, you can see here that as I move the z projection, so as I move the orthogonal slice, you'll see that both the xy and xz projections show us that along the depth, down through the depth of the data set, the bead appears to be elongated. So if I measure the two proportions here and here, the two dimensions, you'll see that it's much longer than it is wide. And that that's the spherical aberration. And that's what needs to be corrected in data sets which have fine detail that we're interested in and particularly where there are fibrous structures that we might want to have a clearer picture of, particularly in making a 3D reconstruction. So how do we correct this data? One of the characteristics that we need to know about our microscope is the point spread function and that is the way in which the light emanates from a point source. I won't go into that in any detail here because I just want to show you the, the practical steps that you would go through in order to create a point spread function where you don't know, where you haven't measured it in your system, but you can estimate it. How you would create that point spread function and then how you would apply it within a deconvolution algorithm to correct a data set. Okay, so I happen to know that in this microscope, let's say, my spherical aberration is about 3 microns, quite long, 3,000 nanometers. Okay, here I've got two data sets. These are data sets of a piece of blood vessel. This data set has the nuclei of the, what look like adventitial cells on the outside of the vessel. <coughs> There's some staining here which is bled through in the channel. But really we use this channel mainly for the nuclei and I don't really want to look at that for the moment so let me just take it out of your view. Here's our main data set. We have these fibres in the adventitia, probably collagen fibres. As we move down through the data set, we start to see the smooth muscle cells. Now these smooth muscle cells have been stained with phalloidin, which is a fluorescent stain that binds to actin filaments in the smooth muscle cells. So our smooth muscle cells are shown a long thin, so this would be one cell here, with all its actin filaments. Here's another cell here with its actin filaments. Now I think we can probably get a clearer picture of these individual actin filaments by going through a digital deconvolution process. And that's what I want to demonstrate. You'll need two plugins for this. One is a diffraction PSF and the other one is a parallel spectral deconvolution. So the first thing we need to do is to create a point spread function. 
So I'll go to my 3D analysis and look for my plugin, which is a def diffraction point spread function, 3D. It asks me for some information. And oh, this is already uh, <coughs> populated from the from the uh, from the previous time I've used this filter, which was a run through of this. So the index of refraction of the media. So did you use oil? Did you use water? Did you use air? My refraction, uh, the refractive index of my media that I used, one point five. Numerical aperture of the objective that I used, uh, I'm just guessing actually, I think it was 1.4. Seems about right for a 40x or 60x objective. I think this was a 40x objective. The wavelength in nanometers that was used to um, to image the, the data. Uh, and this is the, the wavelength, uh, the emitted wavelength. Actually on reflection, I think that probably should be longer. I'm going to make that... I think 550. Okay, the spherical aberration. How much longer is the object than it is broad? How much stretch is on the system? I estimate in this confocal system that it could be as much as 3000 nanometers. You can play around with that. This is the calibration, the, the spacing between pixels, or basically the size of a pixel in uh, microns, or rather in nanometers. The spacing between the slices. Uh, 0.25 microns, or 250 nanometers. The size of the image is 512 by 512, as we can see here, 512 by 512. And in this particular case, we're looking at image 22 of 45, so there are 45 slices. We'll call that, I don't know, can't remember what this is, some of the pixels, yeah, keep it as one. And we'll call this volume point spread function. And we'll click OK. Uh, okay, it tells us a resolution, and you'll see it will it will click through calculating the point spread function for an image which is exactly five twelve by five twelve by forty five slices, and it's important, very important, that the size of your point spread function file is exactly the same dimensions as the data set that you're going to deconvolve. <coughs> I've tried a number of deconvolution algorithms in MHJ and I find this one, uh, the parallel spectral deconvolution, to be by far the best. There's a little dot here. Um, looks like there's something here, some kind of point spread function in there. It's really quite difficult to see it. I find that if you use a lookup table, a 323 lookup table, it shows you the point spread function quite nicely. So this is an estimate of the way in which light emanates from a point within this data, within within the microscope which we've used to collect this data. So this is an estimate of the point spread function. We haven't measured it. And therefore, because it's an estimate, we refer to this as blind deconvolution don't actually know what the point spread function looks like. Just for a bit of fun, actually, you could take this point spread function, throw it into the volume viewer, and see what it looks like in 3D. Switch the light on. And zoom up a little bit. So we are, there's our point spread function, a bizarre looking little thing. I often wonder the shape of this, and I suspect it might be that it's only showing you half of the the point spread function, and it's assuming that this would be a symmetrical object. It generally looks like an hourglass shape, so I mean, I'm guessing here because I'm not entirely sure how the algorithm works, but I suspect that the, the point of light source is here, and that this would be replicated here to give you a sort of point um, hourglass shaped function. I think. Okay, anyway, here we've got my point spread function, and here I've got my data set that I want to deconvolve. I think I can make these fibers a little bit clearer, maybe make this a little bit clearer. I think I'm going to put this into a grayscale just to make it, yeah, looks a little bit better, I think. <coughs> okay, I want to deconvolve this data set with this point spread function. 
And to do that, I'm going to use my parallel spectral deconvolution. 3D spectral deconvolution. Okay, my image is point raw 03pec so it's that data set. My point spread function is this one called PSF. And here I have a choice of different types of <coughs> excuse me, different types of methods. I've actually this one might work okay. I think this one works better. Let's try both of them. A generalized taken off reflexive. Uh, we don't want to auto regularize. I'm going to use here a parameter of 0 0.00402 for no reason other than I have found this to be a particularly effective number. Um, let's just deconvolve this and see how it looks. Okay, so here's my result. Now, the best way to compare is to look at the same slice. So let me let me, um, let me put my original on this side, my deconvolved on this side. Okay, you see that in the first slice, certainly the deconvolved is a bit darker. Is it a bit clearer? Let me zoom through to. Let's see, yeah, slice 23. If we go to slice 23 here, is it any better? Mm, slightly better, I would say. Let me uh, try a different one. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Uh, we'll try this ticking off reflexive. Okay, and a regularization problem. Let's see with that. Um, yeah, let's try this. So let's go to slice 23. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's quite a bit better, I think. I think you can get a little bit of extra deconvolution out of this and I found that when I was playing around with this that if we went to next power of 2 I actually gave quite a nice result oh didn't that time that's horrible let me try this back at 0 0.0042 I think I had it at uh, power of 2, ticking off reflexive. Yeah, I don't like that. Nope. And I think I'll just stick with none. Put this back to 0 0.0042. You could try the auto regularization as well. Okay, I think that looks better. So, really it's up to yourself whether or not you think there's a gain to be had here. Would you agree that this is slightly cleaner than this? If we move to the, to the deeper parts of the seg section, that's 34 against 34. Yeah, I think there's more detail there, it's certainly a... Uh, a sharper image and I think it's it's particularly clear here in this elastin or collagen structure out in the in the advent tissue. I think there's certainly a bit more clarity if I was to zoom in in both of these. I went a bit too far there. Oh. Yeah, okay. I think you get the idea. Okay, so that's just a quick, a quick whirlwind um, demo of how you use the diffraction point spread function and the parallel spectral deconvolution. Works with some data sets quite well, doesn't work with others, but hey, that's how you do it. Okay, hope that was of some use.